Speak. Speak. Speak! Our story begins on September 3rd, 2081, shortly before an eclipse. We follow a space transport landing at the South Pole's Aiken Station. At this unique location, the sun is always near the horizon. There are mountain peaks, always in sunshine, and valleys, so deep that sunlight never reaches them. In these valleys, colonists have found ice that comets brought to the moon long ago. A grandfather and his grandchildren watch the transports land as they wait for the eclipse to begin. Earth is the grandfather's home, but an alien world to his grandchildren born on the moon. They have never experienced a world with an atmosphere, rain, rivers, or life. And they know that their bones and muscles could not survive the crushing gravity of this beautiful world they can see, but never touch. It's approaching midnight of the two-week-long lunar night, a time marked by a full Earth, protected from solar radiation by the moon, and bathed in Earthlight. Colonists have chosen this time as the safest and most beautiful for an excursion outside. Full Earths during eclipses are rare and special. Everything happening now has already happened before. Well, that was anticlimactic. All right. So, what's your definition? I try to make definitions that won't exclude. I would simply say that theater is anything which engages both the eye and the ear. The two public senses are seeing and hearing. The senses of taste, touch, and odor are more proper to intimate, non-public situations. The reason I want my definition of theater to be so simple is so one could view everyday life itself as theater. So situation as artists is that we have all this work that was done before we came along. We have the opportunity to do work now. I would not present things from the past, but I would approach it as material available for something else which we were going to do now. It could enter, in terms of a collage, into any play. One extremely interesting theatrical thing that hasn't been done is a collage made up from various plays. Let me explain my reason why I think of past literature as material rather than as art. There are oodles of people who look to the past as a museum and are faithful to it, but that's not my attitude. Now, as material, it can be put together with other things. This can be things that, don't, that, that doesn't connect with art as we conventionally understand it. Ordinary occurrences in a city, or ordinary occurrences in the country, or technological occurrences. Things that are practical now simply because our techniques have changed. You're welcome. It is altering the nature of music, and I'm sure it is altering our theater. Say, through the employment of color televisions, or multiple movie projectors, or photoelectric devices that will set off relays when an actor moves in th through a certain space. I would have to analyze theater and see what are the things that make it up in order for when we later make a synthesis, we can let those things in. This includes all the literature, it includes seeing and hearing, it includes color, light, shapes that are not moving, shapes that are moving. That sounds very popular. 
it is. Everybody is left behind by...